All right, so we are picking up with problem. Um, so problem four left off that we had people coming in and it was a little bit different just because we have um, hydrogen as the fuel and not a hydrocarbon. Um, and then we also don't know the percent theoretical air. So uh, presumably we do have excess air, but we don't know how much excess air it is. Um, and so the, the equation that you see highlighted in blue, this was the uh, form of that equation with the excess air. Obviously, we don't know what goes in this blank that I've got the red arrow pointed to here. Um, here, coloring it blue now. So we didn't know what goes in that blank, but that's what we're looking for. So whatever goes in that blank, that is going to be the percent theoretical air. Um, and let's see. So we had started off by figuring out what ATH is. If we said W equals zero and just pretend that there's a one in that blank and we figured out the theoretical error is 0.5 but we still had two unknowns we didn't know what go what went in the blank looking for and we don't know w um so but we did know did know something about uh the ratio of things coming in we know the mass flow rate of the fuel coming in and we know the the volumetric flow rate of the air coming in and so what we're going to do is we're going to relate those two things in terms of moles so that was the strategy that we kind of highlighted in blue up at the very top in that box. So the idea is that, and I'm going to put it right here, the number of, or the molar flow rate of that air over the molar flow rate of the, I can relate that just number of moles of air per number of moles of fuel. And this whole thing, that chemical, is written in terms of moles. So that this guy right here, um, <clears throat> this is equal, and actually it's the whole thing. So if I calculate, if I calculate this, this will be the number of moles or kilomoles, whatever you want to write it in terms of, but it's the number of moles of hydrogen. And if you get a single number, right, if it's five moles of air per two moles of fuel, you'll have 2.5 moles of, not water, 2.5 moles of fuel per one of hydrogen. And I realize that this should be, sorry, this should be air. And so, could see that that would be equal to that's the number of moles of air which is in this that's underlined right here per one mole of fuel and it's implied that's that what is in front of that h is just a one so it's going to be whatever's in that blank times th times the number of moles within those parentheses will be 4.76 So that's the strategy. So let's get let's get top part of this. Actually, I'm gonna my highlighter here. This top part. So that's what I'm looking for now. So the molar flow rate of the air. What I have is the volumetric flow rate of the air, and I'd like to relate that to the mass flow rate. So the for your molar mass is the magic thing to go between. Um, term uh, things in terms of moles and mass. So mass molar mass is mass of moles. So you could see that this is going to be if I wanted to get to relate this to the mass flow rate, the mass flow rate of the air. <clears throat> And then, of course, the mass flow rate of the air is related to the volumetric flow rate of the air. That's just divided by the specific volume, that air. Okay. And then one thing that we'll assume is that that air is coming in as an ideal gas. That'd probably be a good thing to put up there. That air is an ideal gas. 
Okay, and so if I did that, well, volumetric flow rate of the air. And now I can put that specific, I'll put, I'll actually bring the specific volume down on the bottom. So it's going to be R T over P or R bar over S of that air E of that air. And then of course I've got my molar mass of the air. So you can see it doesn't even matter what that is. C is going to cancel out. And so I've got all of those things, don't I? I've got the pressure, it's in one ATM. If you put it in kilopascals, your units are gonna work out right. Volumetric flow rate, meters cubed per hour, the temperature, make sure you put in Kelvin, so 303 Kelvin as opposed to 30 degrees Celsius. Um, but you should get um, polar flow rate of, actually, I don't know. I don't know, but I can, well, tell you what the mass flow rate is. Fine, 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 fine. I need a calculator. Here. So let's see. This ends up being 4.827. And this is going to be in kilomoles per hour. Perfect. All right. And so now I've got to get, that's, that's this guy. So now I've got to get the denominator, which is that guy. Actually, I don't want a different color. Let's use this really ugly green. Okay. So molar flow rate of the hydrogen actually is not that bad because it's related to the mass flow rate of the hydrogen divided by the molar mass of the hydrogen. And the molar or the mass flow rate of that hydrogen is given to me. It's two kilograms per hour. And then the molar mass of my hydrogen is 0.016, of course, diatomic, so 0.016. And this is kilograms per So clearly we're going to get like something 2 point or 0.99 something, but that's that guy right there. So I guess let's get that. So this whole quantity here, if I plug things in, ends up being 4.865. Put it as 4.87 about that um and so what goes in the blank there so that blank i guess i could have given it a name but that's going to be um ath 0 0.5 times 4.76 actually i'm sorry that should be divided by it should be divided by so it's 4.87 divided by 0 0.5 times 3 seven six so we should yeah we should get a value of 2.046 which is 204.6 percent theoretical air okay box that just so we have answer if you want to take a pic the screenshot of the whole thing here you go. All right, so let's go on to problem five. Problem five, we've got butane, and this is a little bit different because in this problem, we have a relative humidity given to us. So what that means is that water is present. So we do need to be careful about that. <clears throat> and we're wanting to know what the dew point temperature is <clears throat> Excuse me. I want to know what the dew point temperature is of the water in the products. So, okay, perfect. Let's, let's get all this stuff. So, um, balanced equation. I'm going to need that first because, actually, 
before I even go down that road, let's let's kind of see where we're going, and that will hopefully get us a ni nice road map. So our dew point temperature, write it up here. All right, keep on going back, back and forth. So that dew point temperature, and we're talking about the dew point temperature of the water in the products. That's going to be important because we have water in the reactants as well, and so we don't want to get mixed up with that. So the dew point temperature of the water in the products is just going to be T sat at PV, but again, it's going to be PV of the water in the products. Fair. You can relate PV of the water in the products to mole fraction of the water in the products times um, the, the, the pressure of the products. I guess I could have just used P instead of PRD, PROD, but yeah, I'm going with it. But that's the partial, that's the pressure of the products, so that one ATM. Okay, so of course with this guy, I need a balanced equation. So that's good. So that's where I'm going. Well, let's get that balanced equation. Balanced equation. So I've got the fuel. C or H10 plus. And I've got 160% theoretical air. So 1.6 times ATH times O2 plus 3.76 nitrogen and then of course because I've got water in my products make sure that I count for that I'm actually gonna write him just continue writing him in blue and then I've got the typical products that I would expect co2 water nitrogen and then because I've got excess air I've got oxygen as well so so this is X co2 some amount of water some amount of nitrogen and then of course I've got some amount of excess air. <clears throat> right. Perfect. So first things first. Um so I need to get ATH. All right. So I need to balance this equation, C4, H10, plus ATH2 plus 3.76 nitrogen, no water, right? So this is just the minimum amount, the stoichiometric, stoichiometric amount of air that's required for complete combustion of C4H10, that it burns completely to CO2, water, and nitrogen. Okay. So clearly I gotta do a mole balance. So for the carbon, I got four on the left hand side, I got eight uh, X on the right hand side. I, uh, hydrogen, ten, ten on the left hand side, two Y on the right hand side. Great, so Y is five. Um, and then for for oxygen. I've got two ATH on the left-hand side, and then I've got two X plus Y on the right-hand side. So two times four plus five divided by two, um, and I get a theoretical air of 6.5. So awesome. So I got, got that guy. Highlight some things. Yeah, so that's that guy. Perfect. All right. So now I need to figure out what X, Y, Z, W, and B. Okay. So that. I'll find the rest. 
coefficients. I'm going to be using that ATH that I found of 6.5. All right. So now I'm going back to that big equation up at the top and I'm going to plug in ATH is equal to 6.5 and I'm going to do my mole balance. So for the carbon, I have four on the left hand side. I have X on the right hand side. So that hasn't changed. Hydrogen won't have, well, actually hydrogen will have changed because I've got water there now in my, in my reactants. So for my hydrogen, I have N plus two, just two B. Okay, so that's it for the left hand side. And then on the right hand side, I've got two Y. So I could just put this as five plus B is equal to Y. Okay, so that's good. As long as I have another equation for either B or Y, I can figure out what the, the other remaining unknown is. So, okay, perfect. Now I need to do balance on my oxygen. So my oxygen, I've got, let's see. And by the way, I might, just so I don't have to keep things in. Let's see. <clears throat> I can't do that in my head. So I've got 0.6 times 6.5 and 0.4. So that's 10. Perfect. Okay. So then this would be 2 times 10.4 plus B, because I've got one in the water, and then I've got uh, 2X, which would be 2 times 4 plus Y. Um, and then, of course, I've got 2W. Okay. Um, and if I look above, of course, I've got an expression for Y, so that's great. So I've got 8 plus five plus B, right? That's Y plus two. Of course, my Bs are going to just, those are going to go away, aren't they? Because Subtract on out. But at least now I've got an expression for what W is. Um, so W, I believe, ends up being nine. Let's double check that, shall we? So we have... Four times two is 13 divided by two. Perfect. Make sure I can read my own writing on my notes here. All right. Great. So I think it would be, let's actually go through and highlight some stuff at least. So have this. have this that um, of course Y and B are still kind of a question mark for me but I know that at least I can get uh, nitrogen so I'm going to do a mole balance on that diatomic nitrogen so for the nitrogen I've got <clears throat> on the left hand side I've got 10.4 times 3.76 and that's going to be to Z so I've got 39.104. Perfect. That's okay. Right, so I'm all good there. Um, but I don't know why. I don't know B. So I do need some other expression, some other relationship to tell me something about one of those things. So, still, no. I need some, something else. And that something else is my relative humidity. I'm going to use the relative humidity. And that relative humidity describes... It describes the air coming in. So this is 0.9, but this is equal to, it's defined as PV over PG. So PV over P, 
set at t. Now, don't get mixed up because remember when we were talking in the very beginning and we needed to get the partial pressure up here, we wanted to get the partial pressure of the water in the products. Um, that's the partial pressure of the water in the products. What this is, is we're talking about the incoming air. Incoming waste atmospheric air. So what's that? Let's use Let's use that. It's this thing. That's our that's our um, atmospheric air. So it's important to keep a track of, you know, what mixture are you talking about? So that's good to know. So that means that I know what the temperature of that air is. It's 20 degrees Celsius. That, that the, that's what they told us. So that's good. Um, so, oh, I'll say B of the water vapor in the air, in the incoming air, is going to be just to drive home the fact so this is going to be p sat at the temperature of that air which was 20 degrees celsius times 0 0.9 and you can look this up this guy is in table a2 and it's going to be 0 0.029 bar this is 0 .9. <clears throat> Perfect. Um, and so I can get a partial pressure. I've got 0 0.021051. So that's the partial pressure of the water vapor in the air. So how is that actually going to help me? Well, because I know that just like I was relating partial pressures to mole fractions up there for the water vapor and the products, I could do the same thing down here with the part with the mole fraction of the water in that incoming moist air so that's the thought so i also know that v of that incoming air is equal to um the mole fraction of the water vapor in the air times the pressure of the air all right so let's define the mole fraction of the water vapor in the air. So it's all in that kind of circly pink bubble up there. So the total number of moles in that mixture, it's going to be 0.6 times ATH, which is 10.4 times the number of moles of dry air in the parentheses there, which is 4.76 plus got water vapor. There's is oops it's also going on the top and then the pressure of the air if I look up at the very top it's like it's at 1 atm so one oh, oops 1.0125 1 or right and then of course I know that this is equal to point zero two one oh five one bar okay okay and now it's just a matter of algebraically solving for what b is so i'm gonna save a little bit of time here and solve for b so i ended up getting a value of one oh five oh three so that is fantastic blue here perfect so if I look back up here awesome well, I know that and so finding B equal to 
0503. See that y is going to be 2, but 5 plus that, so 6.053. Okay. Perfect. So I've got my wonderful balanced equation. And so now what I'm going to do, um, actually going to, if I can get this whole without messing anything. Yes. Awesome. Bring this down here just so I can like have it in the picture and I don't have to keep scrolling back and um, so now it would have been I guess it's not that I'm actually gonna place some stuff here place that 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 because I, I have all this stuff now so I've got 10.4 that goes here or I know B now B is the By this time, I'm probably going to just re This is going to be 1.0. What goes in front of the carbon is 4. What goes in front of the hydrogen is, or in front of the H2O is 5. Uh, in front of the nitrogen was 39. 104. I mean, good gracious, I could just write it by this time. I was trying to be smart, but apparently that didn't work out. Um, oh, and it's not five. So sorry, it's not five. It is six. 6.0503. That's right. H2O plus 39.104. Nitrogen plus 3.9 times oxygen. Whew. That's the whole equation there. We're all good. And we need to find um, the partial pressure of the water vapor in the products. That way we can get that saturation temperature and that will be our dew point temperature. So right now we're looking at this guy. Fine, we'll get it. So this guy. Oh, I like purple better. I know it doesn't matter. I know it doesn't. I'm looking at this. This is my mix mixture. So when I'm calculating, I want to find the partial pressure of the water in the products. So it's the mole fraction of the water in the products. Total number of moles, 4 plus 6.0503 plus 39.104 plus 3.9. Of course, on the top is the 6.0503. That's the mole fraction of the water in the products. And then products are coming out at 1.013254. So I get a partial pressure of 0. 0, I'm sorry, 0. 0.11. Five, 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 one, four. Perfect. And so you can look in table A2 or A3. Um, let's actually look together. So partial pressure is 0.11. So I think actually I like looking in table A2 and looking in this column and interpolating because if I look at table A3, um, I mean, I guess it's okay, but I'm interpolating between 0.1 and 0.2 for corresponding value here. Um, so I actually that see if I can interpolate a little bit more closely. So 0.11. Oh, that's <laughs> kind of annoying because it's like right in between there. So I'd be interpolating between this guy and this guy. Doesn't even work very well, but my next pressure would be 
wait and one five 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 one and then whatever temperature that I'm looking whatever temperature responding that that's my dew point temperature because that's the saturation so it's going to be between 45 50 <clears throat> Oh, I'll just put that. It's fine. So, T, E, of those products is going to be somewhere between 45 and 50 degrees Celsius. And you need to interpolate. Interpolate in either A2 or A3. Doesn't matter. Okay. All righty. So, let's see what else we got. Actually, before we get to the first law stuff, I think maybe now that we've sort of like warmed up a little bit, let's go to that first problem that we skipped. We'll go there. All right. So we have 10 grams of propane for just enough oxygen for complete combustion. So what they're saying is that, you know, the, the we've got, it's not air, um, but it's the stoichiometric amount of um stoichiometric amount of air required for combustion um or stoichiometric amount of of oxygen for combustion so let's start off by writing down our our um balanced chemical equation and going from there because that's usually at least that will sort of at least get a get the ball rolling so i have ooh, c three h eight plus and not completely correct but i'll put this ath because there's something that goes there some theoretical amount of air that goes there um theoretical amount of um oxygen that goes there um, and that's going to give us some amount of co2 some amount of h2o yeah. But of course, I'm not going to have any nitrogen because I don't have any nitrogen coming in with that dry air. So that should be it. So let's do a mole balance. Okay. So for my carbon on the left, I've got three. On the right, I've got X. The hydrogen, I've got eight on the left. I've got two Y. Right. For the oxygen, I've got 2H, and that's going to be 2X plus Y. So Y is equal to 4. So we've got 6 plus 4, so ATH is 5. Okay. So our new chemical equation, C3, J8 plus 5O plus 3CO2 plus uh, I'm sorry. There should not be a plus there. There should be a yield there. Plus or H2O. Okay. So that's our nice balanced equation there. That's not our... our it's not our um, uh, final answer, but that's our balanced equation. Now what we're asked about, we're, they tell us how much... Uh, mass that we've got for the fuel. So we've got 10 grams of, of fuel and we want to know the mass of the oxygen and the mass of each of those products that are formed. Now because I, I know I've got this chemical equation this tells me the ratio of you know for one mole of C3H8, I'm gonna get five, I'm gonna require five moles of oxygen. I'm gonna get three moles of CO2 and four moles of H2O. So you could see, I know the ratio of those things. Um, and so I just need to relate, I need to convert things into mass, right? If I've got 10 grams of the fuel, how much, uh, how much mass am I going to need to have for uh, for the oxygen? So, so let's kind of walk down the line. So for oxygen, we have, um, and I need 
the oxygen. I need a mass of oxygen on the top. So I need things in terms of, well, let's see. Any grams on top. So I have 10, yep, 10 grams of C, E, H, 8. Okay. And I know, well, I probably need to get that in terms of moles. So the molar mass, molar mass of C, E, H, 8. go look that up so this is in table you can calculate it or you can look it up let's see so this is in table a1 and the molar mass of propane is 44.09 so mass 09 that's kilograms per. So actually, I need the inverse of this. I need 44.09 kilograms of propane per. I should actually write what I have. C3. 8 kilograms. C3. 8. Okay. So you can, oops, no, I do think so. So you can see that kilograms are going to cancel out. Great. All right. And then I know for one, in my chemical equation up here, for one kilomole of C3H8, it's going to give me, or it's going to require, I should say, five of oxygen. All right. So, well, so clearly now I need to convert the kilomoles of ox oxygen that I'm going to calculate. I need to get that in terms of mass. So my magic number to go between mass and moles is the molar mass. So molar mass of oxygen is 32. That's in table A1 if you don't remember. Grams per mole. So you can see kilomoles of or kilograms is up on top so it is going to be 32 kilograms of oxygen per oxygen okay so hopefully what I end up getting is 36.2 of oxygen box that guy perfect So that's for my oxygen. Let's, let's get the CO2. We'll get the CO2 and the H2O, and we'll call it a day, yeah? So for our CO2, I'm going to do the same kind of thing, right? 10 grams C3H8. Put that in terms of moles. So 44.09 uh, kilograms of C3H8 per of C3 H8 and then I know looking up at my chemical equation up there it's going to be for every kilomole of C3 H8 I'm going to get the kilomoles of CO2 all right so Yeah, I guess probably it's throwing somebody off that I've got things in terms of kilograms, and I absolutely understand that. So, long story short, it doesn't matter. <laughs> okay, so let's go back up here. I'm going to go up here. So I know I've got things in terms of kilomoles. It doesn't matter. If this is a kilomole, that's fine. Let's per put it in terms of moles per gram, right? Moles per mole it doesn't matter right and instead of kilograms per kilomole it's grams per mole okay, same thing over here sorry I'm in a, a bit of a habit kilomole kilomole 
There we go. So the ratio is still the same. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Okay. So yeah. now that's better. Rams. There we go. Perfect. All right. So grams of C3H8, grams, moles, moles. We're left with moles of CO2. And then I need the molar mass of CO2. So mass of CO2 should be 44.01 grams of CO2 per mole of CO2. I don't. Right, and so I end up getting, I don't know, something, the mass of CO2. Nice if I had that, let's see. Oh my goodness. <clears throat> so I've got, and, oh, divided by 49, there we go, got 29.5. Five grams of CO2. Okay. And then the last one is my nitrogen. Right. Oh, not nitrogen because I don't have that uh, water. Okay. So same kind of dealy. Got 10 grams C3, H8. Nope. Oh. Um, Molar mass of C3H8, 4.09 m's of C3H8. And then the ratio um, of um, moles of water to moles of C3H8. So for every one mole of C3H8, I have four moles of water. And then of course my molar mass of water would be at 18.2 kilogram or uh, I'm sorry there I go again. Grams of water per gram uh, per mole I'm sorry per of water. Okay so let's get that as well. All right so 10 times Two divided by no nine. Right. So sixteen point three five grams of water. And so it looks like was that really all I need? Oh. Yeah, I think I didn't actually put um yeah, so in addition to the amount of oxygen, it also asks for the amount of combustion products. So probably should have put that in there as well. So this, it's looking for the mass of the oxygen, but it's also looking for the mass of the products, grams. So my products, I've only got two of them. I've got CO2 and H2O. So the mass of the products would be 29.95 grams of CO2 plus 16.35 grams H2O, uh, 46.3 grams of product. There we go. So I guess really that's the, that's the one that I should box. Okay. All right. So when we return on Wednesday, we're going to start talking about, uh, first law, I'm going to I think what I'll do is I'll kind of go through. I want to take pictures. No. That was it before. Um, all right. So when we come back on Wednesday, make sure that you've watched video 6.2. Kind of pick up, assuming that you have. Um, so this is going to be, that's going to cover the derivation of the first law for a, for an open system where you have chemical, you have a chemical reaction going on, which is half. Um, so there is a similar one, a similar 
the equation for a closed system, but we just aren't going to cover chemical reactions in closed systems just for time's sake. So we will pick up the next time with problem six and go. All right. Thank you very much, guys. And I will see you on Wednesday.